yep thank you for sticking with me um i had to you know check a few things and it was very strange uh you might probably be experiencing a low um a frame rate or very low resolution because i think there's something wrong with my internet connectivity so the bandwidth is quite squished so i can push a lot of high quality video coming in but hey we'll resolve that as it goes the most important thing is we are on today well awesome as always you know that before we get started i bring to you some cool stuff happening well the very first thing let's bring my browser here let me bring this here and let me go here Hackster. okay so before we get started it is my privilege to announce to you that um, i think this needs a special effect this needs like an applause yeah so i have i'm officially a hackstar.io ambassador for ghana yes 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 yep officially um i'm helping with endeavors of uh, a challenge which is being support which is actually being uh, pioneered by uh, undp but then supported by microsoft aws intel um all the crazy guys when it comes to hackstar if you're not familiar with what hackstar is uh let me just quickly take you to the hackstar site uh let's go here so this is hackstar.io it's technically a place for makers you know kind of like a place for makers and uh, people who like to do you know diy build stuff arduino microcontrollers iot it's a really it's a really great place you know to get ideas on projects um you know things that you want to try out and all that so it's a good place to go you know um go go check out and yeah the current context that is ongoing uh is the undp detect and protect uh where is that yeah so this is it the touch less do more which is being done all over the world so this i would encourage you wherever you find yourself there's up to 27 you know thousand dollars in prices to be won uh this supported by you know um, arduino and a couple of people in the in the iot or uh, tech industry so if you have any ideas or if you have any solutions you want to pitch um this would be a good time for you to check this out let me actually put um let me put out the url there and then you can check it out so this is the current project running by hackstar of which i'm trying to help locally uh promote so that is the first thing out there now you can see some cool prices to be won um you know um let's let's check the prices out check 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 so the first the first winner takes ten thousand dollars in value or prices uh so that's overall winner first winner five thousand voucher for hardware and new work online so it's pretty cool check it out uh if you have any idea or have a project you can actually uh, send this out so all my friends that are building cool stuff for this COVID, uh this is an opportunity for you to win some cash and win some hardware as well so go to the link i just put in the in the chat um and then you can you know actually um just um try it try it out you know just have fun uh learning then the second announcement i have which also requires maybe you know a round of applause is you know drum roll is that our hands-free solution yes our hands-free solution was selected for the hackster impact protect award so i won i was part of the people selected for the the impact protect award category for the hackster challenge uh that just i think the couple we have a couple more days to end the challenge so uh so thanks to all those that supported me thanks to all those that help you know push it out there make it a fun project uh really appreciate that so with those two out of the way um let's talk about what we want to do today so if you were f you've been following me last week we didn't air because we were standing in solidarity with our you know the injustice and stuff going on in america so we decided you know to join in the black tuesday uh you know where we pause everything pause conferences pause shows just to just to stand by what's happening uh, uh uh in america so we didn't stream prior to that uh there were some updates from build microsoft build that i wanted to talk about the iot specific stuff if you've been following the channel we've been building up upon doing a home environmental monitoring system we've connected sensors we've you know uh, we've read data from the sensor we've sent it to azure we've visualized it. we've done a whole lot of things on that um as part of the um the 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 delivery for the episodes uh, i was going to show you how to use iot central that would be the last thing we're going to do for this particular series and then we'll probably start something else because then we've connected all the sensors and we can work with that 
Um, so in doing that, I was much interested in the, you know, recently announced um, the Azure IoT certification, which I think that if you really want to take IoT as, you know, something to the next level, uh, you want to look into those, into that certification. So that's something that I wanted us to, you know, to explore. And also to share some, some of the resources that you might use if you want to, you know, explore that certification. So without much ado, let's just get in there. Let's look at what the certification is about. And I'm going to walk you through this, the process that I would take or you should take when you're trying to take in of a Microsoft certification is the process you, you have to go through. So let's, let's do this. So let's flip this here. And then I'll just go ahead and do Azure OT. Yeah. Yeah, this is Azure OT certification. Let's find this. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm looking for, yep. Oh, no, 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 let's go back here. Yeah, I'm gonna open that by the way, but I just wanted to, okay. So if you remember in subsequent episode, I made mention of Microsoft Learn, which is the central point for accessing resources pertaining to almost all the Microsoft technologies you're planning to certify with it. So this is this is like um, the certifications part for uh, the Azure IoT Developer Specialty certification. As you can see, it says candidate for, hope you can see this, let me make this a bit bigger. Yeah, so candidates for the Azure IoT Developer Specialty should have subject matter expert developing cloud and edge computers components of an Azure IoT solution. So if you're following, if you're following along with some of the things we've been doing, you kind of have like an, some exposure to these requirements. You can spend time or go through the learning parts, which you're going to see pretty soon and give yourself some, you know, practical hands-on uh, uh, sessions and then you should be fine. So it says that um, responsibilities for this rule include managing device lifecycle. We've seen that setting up configuration and maintenance using cloud services. We've talked about almost majority of the Azure cloud IoT services, uh, IoT hub, uh, stream analytics, uh, IoT central, uh, all that, all right. Um, you implement design for Azure IoT solutions, including device topology, connectivity, debugging, and security, as well as solutions to manage, monitor, and transform IoT-related data pipelines. You also deploy Azure IoT Edge components and configure device networking. So most of these things, we've seen a bits and pieces of them on the show. But we're going to see how we can do that. And it says that um, an Azure IoT developer works with data engineers and other stakeholders to ensure successful business integration, which is something that you can do away with. So a candidate for this certification should have experience implementing an Azure service that form an IoT solution, including data storage options, data analysis, data processes, platform as a service. So you realize that it's exposing you to probably things like IoT Hub, um, you know, um, event grade, all those things we've used. Now, so the job role is for developer, the exams is AZ220. AZ220 or AZ220, as my people will say. Now, uh, we can go to certification, that's what you see, but this is how it, this is how it looks like. So you write, you write that, cert cert that certification, sorry, you take that exams, AZ220, and then you gain the Microsoft Certified Azure IoT Developer Specialty um, Certification. So these are the skills measured, implementing IoT solution infrastructure, provision and manage devices, implement the edge, process and manage data, monitor, troubleshoot, and optimize IoT solutions, implement security. So this, this, this remains true for all Microsoft exams or certifications. You will see a, you know, a page for that particular certification or exam, and then it will give you some information. You can always download the certification skills outline. That tells you the areas to cover when you're preparing and trying and, 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 and learning for the exams. Now, so if you look at down here, there are two ways to prepare for the exams. You have the online, which is free using the Microsoft Learn and Learn TV, or you can go with the instructor, uh, instructor led, which is a paid service. So you're going to go to a Microsoft Learning Partner where an MCT would help you, you know, train you for the program using the official Microsoft course content. All right. Or you can do it on yourself with online, which is the Microsoft Learn free part. So this is it. So there's a, this is the learning part. Now, anytime you go to Microsoft Learn, you see learning path and modules. Now, learning path contains all the modules you need for a particular certification track. So here, as you can see, uh, you have one, two, three, four. You have four learning paths. If you want to take this certification, um, the first learning path is introduction to Azure IoT. The second learning path is secure, securely connect IoT devices to the cloud. The third learning path is build an intelligent edge with Azure IoT Edge. 
And then the fourth learning path is develop IoT solutions with Azure IoT Central. And if you look at it, there are eight modules here, six modules, three modules, and three modules. I am interested in taking this, so I'm just going to add this. Uh, have I signed in? Um, I think yeah, I'm just going to go ahead. I'm just going to go ahead and sign in uh, so that I can add that to my learning list. Because I, I want to take you through the process. Uh, let's see. Let's get in here. Getting, 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 getting. I'll just show you how it works like. Um, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Yeah, so this, like I mentioned, this remains true for all the certifications. As you can see, I've been doing a lot of learn stuff, but not like, I hear, I hear there are two or three Microsoft employees who have actually taken every, every module on the learn platform. Yeah, so I had. I mean, that's crazy. I've just done a few. I'm just level seven. I've <laughs> done a few things here. But yeah, as you can see, because I'm, I'm also preparing to write the certification as well. Uh, so I'm going to bookmark this. I'm going to add it to the things I want to learn. So just bookmark this one. Bookmark this one. And bookmark this one. All right. And here, let, let's see Ghana. So because I'm in Ghana, depending on where you can see eighty dollars. Depending on where you are, where you where you're located, you might have you know some voucher, this some exam discount uh, writing it. So, yep. So now, the so we've added this, and because we want to go through the process, another resource that you can use apart from Microsoft Learn is a documentation center. All right. So uh, this is it, learning part. So let's start with the learning part, which is introduction to Azure IoT. So what you want to do here, uh, let's see if I can just, yeah, um, yep, so let me close this. We don't need this. So we don't bedding, we don't bedding our, all right. If you're experiencing some lag, just let me know. I will try to rectify that. Okay, so let's start with the learning part, okay? We're going to go ahead. And then introduction to IoT, Azure IoT. So I'm going to click the start. And this is how it looks like. So it has all these tags, beginner, intermediate developer, solution architect, administrator, Azure IoT, Azure portal, that's fine. So um, it, start, it always starts with an overview. It starts with an overview. So interested in building end-to-end -end IoT solutions or about IoT, Azure IoT, but aren't quite show how to get started this part is the place so this is it so in this learning path we're going to learn what does it mean to enable data transformation with iot learn microsoft azure iot strategy and solutions learn how to connect devices to the cloud learn how to create configurations uh, how to create and configure an iot hub uh, learn more about device management and communication learn how to build out a solution so if you look at this this very first one this introduction it's pretty much like everything we've been doing for the past couple of uh, months now all right or weeks on the show and it says that once you complete this learning part you would have the fundamental understanding on how to build azure iot right now solutions on on the azure iot services now prerequisite none now once you start this so you can see the modules in this learning part so the first one is enabling digital transformation this is i think this looks like um, an introductory lesson, you know, there's nothing crazy here. And then the second module is the strategy. I think the strategy is also kind of like some, a lot of, you know, theory, theory, theory. And then here, introduction to the IoT hub itself, right? This is where you can create a hub. And so this is taking you through hands on how to, you know, create a hub, how to do all that. And then um, how to manage IoT devices as an IT admin. So you can look at the Pi simulator, look at how to run and, you know, like device update security. And then your first IoT central app. This is also something that I was going to show. Um, so you can actually go through this and then be familiar with what Azure IoT central is. And then we can talk about the edge uh, as well. And then what the Lambda application, Lambda architecture, sorry. Um, and then there's some other stuff. Now, when you're done with this, when you're done with this learning path, you need to move on to the subsequent learning path. So this learning part is a total of five hours. So if you're planning to do this, if you give yourself a couple of, probably like a couple of months and you decide to say that I want to tackle each like um, a learning path or a module a day, all right? 
uh, let's click a, let's take a module like this so you can see that i want to take you know this module in i'll just take one module it depends on how um your timeline and how aggressive you want to be like if you uh want to you know get this done with you might want to want to dedicate like um an immediate like you know a lot more time to get this done so you can start to do two modules or three modules a day just to get this done you know practice and prepare to do this so this is how it looks this is how it would look like so uh let's let's just uh let's see if i can let's just go back uh one i want to also ch open the second module in another tab so we take a look at it but then we can start with the first one so this is the second module the second learning part which is also like five hours um so you see so this one learn how to manage IoT devices as and now the thing the good thing about this thing is that some of the modules actually are in oh <laughs> Dawood, welcome <laughs> welcome to the show hope you're doing great awesome so the good thing about some of these things is that some of the modules when you do are probably uh if the if the module already is part of another learning part you'd have already covered it so you don't need to repeat the same process again all right so that's something you should just uh take note of all right so i, I, I don't know what's happening today but it looks like there's a lot of frames being dropped and i don't have any background processes too something funny is happening but any which ways um so let's go back to uh let's start with our introduction okay so i'm going to click this uh, we're going to start with it and then let's just get started so for the purposes of introduction and all that I'm, we're just going to do the very first the first module in the first learning path and then i'll give you an assignment or a homework so to speak where you also go and then start with the learning path um i will be doing some kind of raffle for people that want to do the certification and are uh, really serious uh i'll put I'll, I'll know how to look at i'll know how to find those people and those that are interested i'll support you to write their certification so let's just get started so um those is just like i mentioned just kind of theory so every industry whether it's oil and gas retail financial service agritech all being transformed by digital technology says satya nadella the microsoft ceo awesome awesome <laughs> Thanks, Dawood. Uh, so pretty much the first one is telling us about, you know, what digital transformation is doing, how it's helping us, uh, how it's reshaping our lives and work. Uh, so in this module, we're going to take a look at how to define digital transformation, uh, discover the outcome, outcome businesses uh, uh, can achieve through digital transformation, and describe how Microsoft products enable digital transformation. So let's explore that. So let's continue. So. The next thing is what is digital transformation so today we're going to do we're doing a little of some theory before we start to do some yeah so digital transformation is technically about reimagining how you bring together people data processes to create value okay for customers and maintain a competitive advantage in the digital first world now whether you like it or not we are moving to a digital first world and it means that you need to position yourself you need to digitally transform your business and enable your business and your uh, and both your employees and your clients you know to take the lead in digital transformation now digital technologies that create new opportunities for businesses across the globe uh, and they do this by changing the way the goods and services are produced, sold, and consumed. Today, you're consuming services on your mobile phones, right? You're able to do banking on your mobile phones. You're able to buy credit, buy data, do all these things on your mobile phone. That's like a service right there. Today, you can check the price of vegetables, you know, right from an app or from a feed. That's also being digitally what transformed. Now, these technologies help organizations to adapt in the face of competitive what pressure and evolving customer needs. So doing so offers you no know, opting involves like first of all you need to really look at you need to look at your digital platforms you need to look at your digital strategy your culture and your overall processes and approach to the business all right now with a focus on customer engagement business processing and data intelligence these are things that you need to you know you need to watch out for all right now so microsoft enables impactful digital transformation across the four pillars and these are the four pillars that microsoft uses empower employees engage customers optimize operations and transform your product so empower your employees you have to help your employees achieve more by creating a working environment that's intelligent flexible and secure or you might want to call a smart workplace the second pillar is engage customers 
you need to have a way to you know tailor individual customer experience by harnessing data and drawing actionable insights with data you can actually tell the likes and wants and needs of your customer and do personalized products for these customers also you need to optimize your operation you need to accelerate the responsiveness of a business improve service level agreements reduce costs and putting intelligent processes that handle a lot of the things that could have been done faster than humans right now also transform your product the last pillar that is find and capture the best new opportunities by using data as a strategic asset all right and shifting from the hindsight or what to foresight so this is just like basic introduction now to organizations actually transforming by developing new capabilities across their across these four pillars all right now if you partner with microsoft in this doc, in this documentation uh, organizations can harness the world of ubiquitous data uh, computing and build innovative solutions to today's business challenges now let's dive a little a, a, a bit deeper let's look at what microsoft offers so let's dive deeper with uh, justin altov i hope i didn't butcher the name microsoft executive vp worldwide for commercial business and look at how microsoft 365 dynamics 365 microsoft azure and microsoft commitment to continued in innovation is delivering a lot of these things so uh, there's a video here so i mean you get you get a drift right you get a drift so this is how it looks like a, you know mixture of theory uh, some theories here and there and then you know some hands-on stuff so as you go through this process you know you are you are you are acquiring the information and knowledge you need to help you to certify all right so let's um let's see how long this is if we can probably watch this the theme of my talk for all of you today is about becoming digital and i want to start with this notion of the intelligent cloud and the intelligent because it's this very paradigm shift that is driving so much digital innovation. And if you think about this notion of the edge, what it really is, it's about people experiencing life through technology. If you think about it, perhaps the last time you went to a concert, the person to the left of you, the person to the right of you, were all actually watching that event through their mobile phone. In fact, if you're willing to admit it, you probably were doing the same thing. Whether it's mobile devices, whether it's sensors, sensor fabrics, this notion of ubiquitous data and ubiquitous compute is surrounding us and it's creating the intelligent experience. It's harnessing those experiences that matter most in terms of trying to transform businesses as well. Whether it be experiences that you deliver internally to empower your employees, ways in which you change how you engage with your customers, how you optimize your operations, and how you even think about transforming your products. It's this notion of harnessing everything at the edge all the way through to the cloud and using that as the backbone for business innovation. So one of my favorite examples uh, to just sort of bring this concept to life is this work that we're doing with the Burlington Northern Santa Fe Railway. Railways have been around long before we even had a computing industry, and yet this company has chosen to embrace digital technology, the intelligent edge, to reinvent how it drives safety into the hands of its people. So what you're witnessing on this live motion video is drone tech actually serv ser uh, servicing and surveying tens of thousands of miles of railway across the country. Now this drone isn't just round tripping data back and forth in the, to the cloud for, for intelligent reasoning, it's actually a deep neural net running at the edge. So the intelligence is actually being processed real time at the edge. This technology is changing the way we can deliver real time analytics and real time AI experiences. Whether it be BNSF or a German auto manufacturer that we're working uh, with today to leverage the same kind of technology at the edge of their autonomous cars, to de-identify GDPR sensitive data as it's collecting in collision avoidance uh, information from human faces and countenance. Technology at the edge is a part of how we will think about the future of compute today. This concept is alive and well in how Microsoft develops its solution areas. We're very intentional about the areas where we innovate in product. It actually, if you think about it, lines up very well uh, with how we experience technology throughout our lives and how we develop as humans. 
I'd be willing to bet the first time you ever touched technology was as a child, when somebody said, let's play a game. And whether that stuck with you throughout your life or you experiencing it through your kids, gaming is such an important part of our uh, development and innovation at Microsoft, and we're super committed to it as a solution area. It also teaches us things about even how we develop our cloud platform, the world of high-performance gaming, and the lack of tolerance for any type of millisecond bleep uh, in that experience actually teaches us how to serve Fortune 1 Walmart in operating their stores around the world using Azure. So these are intrinsically linked solution areas. That same concept of developing gaming for the enrichment of, of the human experience carries us into what we call modern life. We want to deliver Microsoft experiences across heterogeneous platforms, across different device form factors. And in fact, over the last two years, we've written more software for iOS and Android uh, than any other software company on the planet. So it's embracing these open standards and embracing the human experience uh, to truly bring uh, digital and rich uh, life uh, to, to modernity. That then same concept trends into think how we think about work. We believe that people want to take the technologies that they love to use in their home and in their lives and bring them to work to make them more productive. It's why we made uh, a freemium version of Teams earlier this year. So uh, if you're running your Boy, Sc Boy Scout troop meeting or, or your book club meeting, uh, whatever the case may be, you can use Teams to collaborate in your life and then take the same technology to work. It's actually what's driving a thriving growth strategy for us uh, in our modern workplace technologies. And we now have more than uh, Slack even has in terms of paid usage of teams in the workplace. Modern workplace has long been the cornerstone uh, for Microsoft in the productivity realm and voice and video and how we think about uh, delivering secure experiences to the workforce. And so we've invested deeply in these technologies. That then has, in fact, fed how we think about our business application strategy. Uh, it's one of the fastest growing sectors that we have. And it's not about going out and replacing the world's CRM systems or the world's ERP systems. It's about bringing AI-driven business processes to your work to actually help you achieve more. Uh, the open framework that uh, Satya and Shantanu and Bill McDermott announced uh, yesterday actually is very testament to that. And our partnerships with ISVs around the world drive our applications and infrastructure business in a way that it brings together a common data estate for our customers. Data is at the core of everything we do. It should be, in fact, at the core of everything you do as well. When you think about artificial intelligence, it's often all of the cutesy virtual agents and graphical experiences that get all of the time and attention. But trust me when I say if you don't first invest in your data estate, all you will do with your fancy AI technology is make mistakes with greater confidence than ever before. It is, in fact, these solution areas and this paradigm shift of the intelligent edge and the intelligent cloud that brings forward uh, this notion of empowered experiences and digital transformation for businesses. This is what we do at Microsoft. We innovate so that you can take our R&D and make it a, an extension of yours and bring forward true digital transformation scenarios uh, in the businesses uh, that you run today. For us, when we think about our commercial space, we think about the solution areas that matter most to businesses across modern workplace, across our business applications, core apps and infrastructure and data and AI. It's our job to make, marry up this portfolio of intellectual property to the things that matter most to you. When we talk about digital transformation, we talk a lot about uh, these four pillars, this notion of employee empowerment, the notion of enhancing customer experiences, optimizing operations, and transforming product. The notion of asking the question about how the, how the data about your business can actually become more important and, and more valuable than the business itself. These categories to us actually serve as a canvas to innovate and, and co-innovate together with you. Honestly, if you sort of think about them in the generic sense, uh, they're less relevant to any business. But in fact, they actually serve almost as a checklist for how we can work together and think about the things that matter most to you. We want to work together with all of you to drive impact that is relevant to your business. Well, awesome. So, like you've seen, so these are some of the resources that you actually get um when you use the platform all right yeah sorry that took, that took a while but that's just how it looks like now and a couple of things you mentioned so you realize that technology at the edge or iot at the edge 
is going to be the future from smart watches to smart fabric to smart you know devices it is the next thing incorporating and harnessing the data from these smart devices and incorporating it into your business and your product line takes you to the next level and gives you that advantage so without much ado in today's very short and introductory video into the certification go check the certification part out if you like it you know just take some time you know do it practice it it's going to give you a lot more insight into what iot this white thing is now next week next week we are going to come back to this we're going to come back to our setup uh and then i'll show you how to you know send uh data from the raspberry pi to iot central how to you can provision your templates and do all that and then that will be the last part of our series on building the home environmental monitoring system then the week after you probably see me connect all the sensors and then you know sending them to azure iot hub and then visualizing and then trying to do some alerts and all that through maybe power automate so we have two more so we actually are going to have two more sessions or two more episodes in this series and then we're going to jump into another series for iot tuesday so if you have any idea on what we want to build or if you have anything or any topics you want me to treat on the show send it to me at any of my social handles down here and i'll do very well you know to get you um, that information to do it on the show for you till then stay safe um let's all fight injustice let's love one another different colors one people we love ourselves um and then hey let's learn something new and share so then it's adios for me Fake it. Tough time come, them no stick.